yes, the, the allowed for living, sometimes murderous feelings, sometimes <laughs> getting murdered feelings. Uh, again, one of the best cues I ever got, it was the first video game I ever did, oh, no, what? second video game. Slow, painful death in parentheses <laughs> on fire. <laughs> yeah. That was, for, that was for Unreal Championship 2, the Leandri conflict on the Xbox. So, oh, the question's already coming. Um, Uh, hi, I'm Jim Ferranda. <laughs> Q and A. Uh, yeah. Hi, who are you playing uh, Dragon Ghost House something? Oh, uh, I play Lady's dad. I was in. Basic oh, you're playing. Oh, was, yeah. you what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that he would come back, but no. I mean, Lady's got to find a house and come back and go. Look, Dad. Look, Dad. I did this. Well, I'm very proud of you, son. You're a dragon. <laughs> no, he's, remember, he's got to be a little bit arrogant. Of yeah. Saying like his son's useless or something. I know. It's, it's, you got to set an example. We're 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 important. <laughs> that was. Oh, that was fun. And that Kovacs was like so good as, as, as Letty. It was, um, that was a fun show. It, it was one of those good, where they take a thing that's very common in anime and they just, they, they, they add one thing very unique to it and it makes it something completely different. Mm -hmm. So. The yeah. uncommon dragon. <laughs> yeah. It's weird, it's like, I was credited as like, Let's Dad for some reason. And now, like Internet Movie Data everywhere, I'm Let's Dad. You know, hey, it's, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, going to, you know, you want to have a child? Let's dad. You know, it's, eventually they're going to start asking you to do a Kratos. Boy. <laughs> so, um, I, gosh, the Q&As are like, I'm better at talking with people than talking at people. So <laughs> I'll give like a, just an, an intro, um, uh, kind of like a small version of my panel tomorrow, the toy thing. I basically... I started working in advertising uh, when I got out of school and eventually started working on Hasbro Toys and due to a production error, they needed people at the ad agency to do voices for a G.I. Joe spot. And so we all just kind of piled into a booth and we recorded all the roles. We didn't even slate our names, it was just recorded. And Hasbro unknowingly cast me as five different roles for like the entire campaign. <laughs> and so when they found out it was me, they just said, I'll just have Hasbro to do it. And so I was, it, was, it was job security, but I was doing you know, uh, you know, Hasbro commercial VO for, for a long time. And then a producer said, you know, you could get paid for doing this. And so I, I gave it a try, and I did this on the side for like, you, you know, oh gosh, oh, yeah, 12 years until I got laid off. And then I thought, I'm going to try doing this full time. And so yeah, tw since 2013, I've been a full-time voice actor, and it's been OK, so I'm still here. I, uh, <laughs> I, even without it, well, my wife's health plan, you know health benefits and being a diabetic, it sucks. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that's my intro, and I've been in like a ton of stuff, a lot of people don't realize I've been in things, it's, um, sometimes I forget stuff that I've been in because I've, I've, I'm usually being, um, you know, strange creature, person getting killed, cop, occasionally I'll get like a, uh, a named character, which is nice, I love it. But um, yeah, uh, I always say like One Piece is like one of the greatest things for character actors because you're always working. We need a we need a you know we need yeah, a I giant talking stop. slug wave. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sluggy 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 Yeah. So it's, yeah, working with Anthony's great. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if anybody has any questions, it would be great. Oh yes. Uh, what was it? How did you get? to know Gearbox. How did I get to know Gearbox? Well, the first thing I ever auditioned for in Gearbox was um, uh, it was for Brothers in Arms. I did not get any of the major roles in the first game, but I got called in for multiplayer character A in the second one, which I think was, I don't know if it was Hell's Highway or Earned in Blood. It was the second one. And um, yeah, and the next thing I did for them was uh, so I was a British tank commander. I was originally coming in for a different role, but they ended, be, ended up having me do a British tank commander. I had not practiced the British accent, and it's funny because when you look back on the IGN walkthrough of this, of the third uh, Brothers in Arms game, it's like level, 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 something, something with weird British accent. That's literally <laughs> on the web page, and I thought, oh, that's ow. But I mean, I knew it was weird because I was not prepared. Hi, YouTube. I was not prepared for it, and um, I just, 
they just started bringing the intro stuff. The first thing I ever did for Borderlands was uh, Zombie Island of Dr. Ned, that DLC. I was, um, I was Jethro Shedd who got killed by Zombie Steve. <laughs> um, I was, I was Hank Reese who basically wore a macaroni hat because his daughter made it for him and he wore it to the plant every day. And then he turned into a skag, a weird skag. Um, there was a, there was a shaggy knockoff called, um, oh, Harry. And the, well, let's hide in a, you know, hide in a barrel, nobody will look there. And, oh, gosh. Dirk Smallwood, who was a vault hunter who was not very good, and he died. It was all echoes. And, oh, and I was the glitched Jacob's vending machine that only worked once. And I was like just starting out at the time, and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta record this so I can put it on a reel. And I, I unlocked it, and I went up to him, like, this is great. And then I got all the stuff hooked up to the TV. Why is it not working? So I had to start a new character and play all the way through again and unlock the, the vending machine so I could record it. But, um, and yeah, and. I was I was in every Gearbox game, uh, up in, yeah, almost every single one that they published. I even did some test recording for Aliens Colonial Marines, even though I was not in the final game. So technically, I was in that game too, sort of. So yeah, that that's how that's how I ended up with Gearbox, and um, I was I was so many characters in Battleborn. Um, it was a great game that just got completely trounced by Overwatch. I loved that game. I platinumed it. That's how much I loved it. And um, when when the time came when they when they needed a uh, different claptrap, then that's when they they seven month long audition process, and that's what happened. <laughs> so the condensed version, which was still kind of long. <laughs> so yes, you touched on it a little bit. Um... I typically hear that the writing and recording process for AAA games tends to be pretty short. At least as what I heard from Bethesda voice actors. Is that uh, similar to your experience? I would say that's that would be definitely different than how Gearbox works. We I started working on Battleborn in golly, January of 2014. And that was being written while we were recording. It was a great experience because the writer, Aaron Lindy, he would he would kind of feed off of our performances, and if he thought that we did something really funny, he would kind of build the character off of stuff like that. We, a lot of that was ad lib, and it, it, again, years, two years before the game even came out. Yeah, that's a pretty, and, um, that's a very different process. Yeah. Um, you may have had similar jobs, I know, with uh, Bethesda. Um, their kind of audition process is uh, they'll get a voice actor. Like, can you do a tough guy voice, a uh, cowardly guy voice? And they'll kind of go down through the list, and then um, so, so it's like three days to kind of just practice it, and then they'll yeah. pick a favorite from what they did. Like Richard Epper, he got the uh, cowardly guy voice. They liked this. That's interesting. I'll have to ask. Um, I've become pretty good friends with um, uh, Wes Johnson. I'll have to ask him about that because he'd be able to tell me all about it. Um, he's a... Uh, I don't want to ask him about that. That's interesting. I I would love to be in a Bethesda game, by golly, but uh, I have not had the luck of being able to read for them yet. There's a second best thing I'll do real fast. Is a uh, it's a mod project called uh, Beyond Skyrim, and they're working on pretty much almost every province, mm -hmm. and they're almost always looking for volunteer voice talent. Uh... So if you ever Ooh. so uh, fan project for the whole whole continent, if you're a hard fan like that. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, I would if I were to do something like that, I would totally do it like under a, like a pseudonym or something. So, because then I'd be afraid like a whole bunch of mobs. Like, Why do my game? You know what I mean? So it's like <laughs> I, I just did this for fun. Yeah. So anyway, okay. But that's that's interesting. I have to look out for that. Yeah. Um, just that project is called Beyond Skyrim. Simple name. Will do. But, uh, I'll get you. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll just hold off. Okay. Um, I am terrible at picking people because I didn't see who raised their hand first, but uh, they did it over uh, yeah. to your right. What? It, it did. <laughs> oh, there I, you may have just been stretching. I was just stretching. Okay, there we go. He was okay. just stretching. Well, I, I hope the muscle that you were stretching feels better. <laughs> uh, you talked about improvising. Yes. How much of Claptrap in Borderlands 3 was improvised? Oh, gosh. Oh, no. um, it, you know, it depends. They... They had so much lore and story to basically cram into that game 
that claptrap was pretty, it was pretty tightly wound. Um, a lot of that was more in the performance. Some smaller words, um, it, like it would be, oh gosh. And then 15 minutes passed while he tried to think of a specific <laughs> um, uh, Probably the biggest ad lib I did was all of stealth, stealth time. Um, I, so which it, one? Stealth time, when basically he says he, when he, in the intro, when he's like, I'm gonna cross this field. Oh god. And then he sings his own stealth music. <laughs> yeah. That's a thing Gearbox does now is they basically, they will have me do some sort of random singing, ad lib singing, <laughs> in, in all of their stuff now. When he's it's, like tucking and rolling and, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like in Wonderlands, the anthem of peace, the lyrics were there, I ad libbed the whole melody. <laughs> so, um, and, uh. Yeah, it's, they, I think because they were so, there was a lot riding on the specificity of the story in, in Borderlands 3, there wasn't as much improv. In Wonderlands, they allowed more improv. That was, that was a lot of fun. Who was the most fun you've had in the role? Oh, my golly. I, I have to say, it's, it's pretty much everything on Battleborn. It was, I... I worked, I worked a taunt based on my cat. Um, because it was one writer writing for 30 playable characters and, and the story. Uh, he was coming up with, like, uh, it was response. And uh, something angry. I said, I am so angry, I could punch a kitten. And the reason why is my wife and I have just adopted, you know, uh, our second cat. And, you know, I, you know, not actual legit threats, but Michi often, I will punch a kitten if, unless you get off the mantle. Don't make me punch a kitten. And it became this running joke. And so when we were coming up with angry lines that you were respawning again, I, I said that and Aaron said, I like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it, there was, we really built those characters from the, one of my favorite stories about that was um, for the first time I was recording the character Isaac, it was specifically for uh, PvP testing, and um, there were some little minions that were just fodder. For it was kind of like that that sort of uh, you know LOL type smite type gaming. Uh, and one of them said, "Oh, Daddy, you've come back." And I'm like, "What? Did he make these characters? Did he create these minions?" And so Aaron, who was still writing the story at the time, he said, "Let me hold on. Let me let me go. I have an idea." And then he leaves for like five, ten minutes, and I'm thinking, did I do something wrong? And then he comes back, he said, okay, so now Isaac is the head of Minion Robotics. Uh, you just gave yourself a bigger part. You are the boss of the first level now. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> All I did was ask, why, why they're calling me dad? And it was just, so yeah, it was, that was crazy. That's, that's how, it was just a wonderful experience, and I will be thrilled if anything could even come close to that. Working with Gearbox is great. Um, Joel McDonald is the, he's their, their VO director now, and he's, he, he cast me as Vander Decken in One Piece, and he's great to work with, and he never, you hear stories about how, you know, yeah, they made me scream at the top of my lungs for three hours, and now I can't talk. Joel looks out for us when we do um, uh, elemental reactions uh, for acid, ice, electric, you know, fire. He says, okay, every session, we're going to do one of these, and it's going to be at the very end. Because you've got to do this, I'm on fire, I'm dissolving in acid, I'm freezing to death. It's a full 30 second, you know, you have to do it 30 seconds straight, so they can, like, string it together. And, um, yeah, he will never, he always looks out for us. He will never kill our throats. He will never, like, you know, make us, you know, cough on blood. He's a good guy. You're not going to do a Dragon Ball? <laughs> uh, he, Oh, so, so, so you know the verb. <laughs> Another Battleboard story. The first time I ever injured myself was yelling airstrike. In my first Battleboard session, it was near the end, and I felt something pop, and I just completely lost my voice. And then Raleigh Pickens at Ogretron said, oh, you dragon balled it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then later on, Joel told me, oh, you know should have blood that. Because that, that was before Joel was the, the VO director, like, oh, oh gosh, a long time. But um, I told him that story, and he said, yeah, that's, I did the same thing. I ruptured a blood vessel, and he, he, he told me that whole story, and it's, oof. But it, yeah, it just killed my voice. I couldn't talk for like a week. Oh. Yeah. 
Oh, you had another question back there. You raised yeah, your hand. Yeah, I, I kind of had like two very short questions. What's your question? Yeah. Um, what do you think of Borderlands Three? <laughs> I like Borderlands Three. I there's there's aspects of the story that okay, Ava's funeral, or the, the uh, you know the um, the the that Ava story that was was cut. It was that was crushing because it, it people ended up misreading her so horribly. And I just, and everybody in the narrative team was like, man, I wish we could have left that in there. Because it would have, uh, people would have been like, oh, I, I get it. So, Ava is a much better character than everybody gives her credit for. It's because nobody got a chance to see all of it, you know what I mean? It's, um, I, I liked Borderlands 3. I, uh, I mean, I get, that was another one I legitimately, I, I platinumed the game. You know, I still haven't gotten the Wandering Debt Collector in Hands of Jackpot because for some reason it will never spawn for me. So that's the one trophy I still have not gotten. Bad luck with that. And as the, uh, as the other question, um, another opinion question. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you really heard too much about the, the modding scene, but this is going on with the fan-made projects uh, thing you mentioned earlier. The voice actor for Crystal from Star Fox Adventures came back to do a Half-Life 2 mod. <laughs> and I, 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 really? I didn't know if yeah. you knew that, and I wanted to hear your opinion on it. That's really freaking cool. Yeah, she did all of Alex's voice lines, but as Crystal. <laughs> and oh Nintendo, gosh. and well, actually, no, that'd be Nintendo didn't come back to them for that. Well, if that's for, if it's for free, and, and they don't know about it, well, it might just kind of fly under the radar. I, I don't. Know. Well, it's <clears throat> yeah, it, it kind of just flew under the radar, I suppose. The Chris, so when if it's someone just individually modding the character Crystal into the yeah. game. Um, the Nintendo or any company or Rare, Rareware or Rarestuff, they don't have any, um, or no, Retro Studios, that's the name. Yeah. Retro Studios, they don't have any rights over voices or, uh, Yeah, it's because, yeah, because, I mean, because the actor could always say, yeah, I'm, I'm just doing, this is another voice. Yeah. That just happens to be for this character. It's, I, I can see how that would, it's, it, I remember one time, I did a, I, it was like a series of children's videos. And in the, thank God I have an agent because of the contract that said, you can't use this voice for anything else. It's my regular voice. I'm playing a dad. <laughs> I'm like a, a six-year-old. Let's you know? dad. What's that? Let's dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't sound like this, that would make children cry. Um, this, was, this was just like, it was just, it was the twins, Drew and Gracie. I was like, oh, come on, let's go for it. Yeah, it was, but yeah, it was like, they can't, they can't you can't. Like hold the rights to my regular voice. As, but as yeah. yeah, and as far as I looked it up, they definitely can't copyright voices. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's it's, it's weird. It's like I'm, that's why I'm not a lawyer, because I'm an actor, not a lawyer. It's it, it, <laughs> they definitely could waste time and money in court, but save time with your uh, agent catching that. Uh, imagine yeah. losing that court case though. It's like you just have to put on some kind of weird Mark for the rest later. of forever. <laughs> <laughs> that's like one of those. Oh, one of those dystopian, you know, future sci-fi movies, only a comedy. Yeah, you're just not allowed to talk unless yeah. it's... <laughs> Talking to my cat. I love you so much! <laughs> Do you want me to give you some tuna? I mean, it would be... <laughs> okay, now we're in the Let's Dad yeah. territory, which is a whole other trademark. I love you so much! <laughs> cat would love it, because cats hate high-pitched sounds. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be bad. Yeah. It, has a role ever given you a line that you couldn't get through? Uh, Either because it was too out there or too funny? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been able to get through everything simply because if I couldn't get through a line, I wouldn't be working. They would never hire me again. However, um, I was just, it was just a few weeks ago recording um, Trapped in the Dating Sim. The world of Oklahoma games is tougher mobs. Oh my god. Yeah. Are you familiar with the show? No, that sounds amazing. It's, it's one of the best isekais ever because it just, it's... The guy basically appears as, a, as an NPC, a mob, a background store, a background character in, um, in a dating sim that was made by a development house that usually makes like strategies and action games, but their publisher said, you should make a dating sim, there's a market for this. So they basically shoehorned all of their previous genres into this one dating sim oh, game. Oh, no. It's a big setup. He finds himself in the game. He just wants to stay a background character for the rest of his life. But 
Through fortunate accidents, he becomes more and more important in the story. And I play a microtransaction. <laughs> that, uh, that basically, he, in order to beat the game that he didn't want to play in the first place, long story, uh, he bought a microtransaction. And so he buys that same micro, microtransaction uh, in, in, within the isekai world. And it makes him just uber powerful. And he's a robot that sounds like this. He's very calm. You earned a new title. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so the, 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 the script adapter, there's a scene where Jordan Dash Cruz is, he's, he's like basically racing to, it's an important part of the story, and my, my character says something very snarky, and he says, you better clap that trap. <laughs> and, and, I was, and I just started laughing. I started laughing, and I was laughing for a good five, ten minutes. <laughs> and I could not, yeah, it was just so funny. It was, I was very touched by that. I was like, you did that for me, you know? And it was, um, yeah. I, <laughs> but yeah, I, there's been times where I just, it's been hard for me to, like, stop laughing. But I always managed, I always managed to get through it. So, because I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Where's your favorite line for Claptrap? <laughs> you were looking at it. Because I'm a big, I'm a big Arthur C. Clarke 2001: A Space Odyssey fan. That that my ass, it's full of stars. <laughs> it sounds more like him with all the processing, but I just again, that was another one where I, where I read it and I started laughing as I was reading it because I was you're going through the script and it's like oh, this is funny, but it hit me as I was reading it. Oh my god, this is funny, and I cause, again because it's. I, I love 2001, and it's just it. And uh, there's a lot of literary jokes and stuff like that references get in there because yeah, it's, it's, it's that's a favorite. Yes, I actually, for me, want to address kind of the elephant in the room. Uh, they're doing a Borderlands movie, and yes, you're the, uh, not the voice of Claptrap. I am not the voice of Claptrap, and I found out on Twitter. Oh, yeah. I, I here's the thing. Um, I got a very nice message from the folks at Gearbox, and um, from what I understand, and uh, they they were really wanting it to be me, but I uh, wanted it to be you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, but you know, it's it's there's a lot of money behind making a movie like that, mm -hmm. and the studio is putting like all the money into that, and you know they, they there's if somebody who doesn't know what Borderlands is, which it's hard for people like us to believe that, but it's like... <laughs> Nine out of yeah, ten people. Yeah, and it's like, you know, if they see Jack Black is in the movie, they're gonna go see it if they like Jack Black. If they see I'm in the movie, they'll go, who? You know, it's, um, and so it's, I understand why it, it was done. They, uh, again, you know, Gearbox really wanted it to be me, but it's, they were not the only people involved in making the film. But it was, you know, they, they said, you are our claptrap. And they, they, they sent me that message on that day, and that was the most important thing anybody could have done, because that was, that was a real, you know, because you know, they, couldn't, they couldn't say anything, because it's, it was all under NDA and stuff, and I was hoping, and I was thinking, it's probably not, but I'm still hoping, but it was, it was the kindest thing, and you know, it's like, a lot of people like to, a lot of people like to, you know, bash on the company, and it always kind of bothers me, because everybody there that I've worked with, they're good people, they really are. And it's just, I don't know how things circulate, but I mean, they've, they've always been kind to me. And, you know, it's just, that was probably one of the kindest moments. It was, I really needed that, because that was like, that was one of those lowest of the low points. And I was like, damn. Because when I was cast, um, the movie had been in development for like forever, and I thought, oh my gosh. I might be in a movie, and I, I thought about it for a long time. But when I worked for Hasbro, um, from what I understand, you know how like Frank Welker was not in the first Transformers movie, and Peter Cullen was almost not in Transformers because Michael Bay just did not want cartoon voice actors in his movie. Oh, the live action. Sorry. Yeah, the live action. I thought you meant animated. I'm like, wait, yeah. What? Oh no, no, I'm talking about the, yeah, the the Michael Bay movie. Yeah, yeah. And Hasbro was like. You need to have Peter Cullen. At least oh. Peter Cullen is the voice of Optimus Prime. And 
uh, on the advertising agency side, we only heard what we were told. But what I think, you know, when, when people found out that, that it wasn't going to be Peter Cullen or, you know, the internet was just like, oh, he's the voice of Optimus Prime. He really was, you know, and it's just, um, and I thought, that might happen for me, but I don't know, because a lot of people still don't like the fact that I'm Claptrap now, so it's, it, it, you know, it's, you can't please everybody, but um, I am rambling. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's, it, the possibility was always there, how slim, you know, no matter how slim, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's disappointing, but um, you know what, I'm in Wonderland, and I'm happy about that, because they, again, they, they said you're our Claptrap, and so yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're our better Jack Black. Take that as your compliment. I don't know. I, I don't. I, I would not do it. I wouldn't have been as good in like, you know, not maybe or something. Or something. I, I would not have been good in School of Rock because I can't play an instrument. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, Jack Black is great. And the thing is, is that if anybody's going to be a good claptrap, like a motion picture Hollywood version, it's going to be him. Yeah. <laughs> But if it wasn't Jack Black, who would you have cast for for a uh, claptrap outside of you? Yeah. Not me. Oh my! You're you're putting me on the spot like that. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that I have to sit and contemplate. That's like somebody saying, "What's your favorite video game?" Like like, what's your favorite movie? Like you're making like, 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 me pick one? <laughs> oh gosh, I um. I, oh Lord. Um, <laughs> It's okay to say Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I will say, okay, so this is, uh, you know when Nintendo did their direct and they were announcing the, um, and my wife was, we were, um, oh gosh, we were, we were like basically like doing two separate things at the same time in the kitchen because we were doing like those, um, those order your dinner in a bag and then you cook it at home. And so, and I'm like, hold on a second, I want to watch this. And I was watching the direct. And it says, and I made a joke, and I said, oh, man, Jack Black's going to be Mario. And she said, what? And I go, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. It's Chris Pratt. And I said, no, it's Chris Pratt. And she goes, what? <laughs> and, then I, and then they get to Bowser, and Jack Black is Bowser. I'm like, son of a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> sure enough, it's like, and it's, it's, it's funny because the, um, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that I'm going to bring Pratt. I can't remember his name. But the, the, the voice actor who played Bowser, he moved to Dallas. And I actually saw him. Uh, at a convention, and I said, maybe we should start a support group for people who have been replaced by Jack Black in movies. <laughs> <laughs> I think Charles Martinet, right? What's that? Is it Charles Martinet? No, no, Charles no. Martinet is... Uh, it's, it's Charles Martinet is Mario. Yeah, he's Mario. Who's Bowser? Bowser's... Can me... Oh my god, I'm feeling... I'm feeling awful because I'm having the worst brain drop right now, and I can't remember his name. Google help. Yes, I... <laughs> so, please Google that, and I'll answer another question while um, you're Googling that. But yes? Oh, uh, she was first, because I saw it. But I'll give it to you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, all right. Well, what is your favorite video game? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. So, uh, okay, so the first thing that pop there's a, there's a lot, but I'll say here's, here's a series that I, I have some colleagues that have made it into the last one. And I would, just, I would just want to audition for it. I so badly want to audition for Earth Defense Force 6. The Earth Defense Force series is bit Because when Earth Defense Force 2017 on the Xbox 360, it's this, you know, it started out as like this low-budget, you know, game series mm -hmm. in Japan. And there's something super addictive about it. <laughs> um, it's, 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 like a, it's like a loot collection light. And there's, <laughs> it's, it's all, like, recorded, like a low-budget 50s horror movie on purpose. And um, it's, it's just, it's, it's, you know, you're shooting giant bugs and spiders and robots and, and, and frogs that look just like us. It's, it, who, I, I don't know who said that line, but it's, it's become kind of like a, a, a great meme for that. But that's series. Oh, I would love to be in an Earth Defense Force game. That's a favorite. Uh, I also like the Yakuza series and uh, the Hitman series. I cannot wait for oh, IO Interactive's Bond yeah, game because it'll be the first Bond game where he's actually a spy and not just running around Call of Duty style, you know? Because yeah. um, to be able to be like a James Bond and sneak in here, take photographs of stuff, don't be seen, that's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. you know? um, I've, 
I like a lot of games. I even some sports games if they're like Mutant League football on the Sega Genesis. Yes. It's, I mean it's you know or uh, I'm still sad that MGM canceled their their version of Rollerball, like the James Conn Rollerball on the PlayStation. They were making a game in the mid '90s, and then when they decided we're going to do a remake of Rollerball. They said, well, we're going to can this old game because it's based on the old movie. And I was very sad. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, it's hard to pick just one. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll see people, like the things go around on social media, here are my top five games. And even for that top five, how can you just pick five? five. Maybe if you narrow it down to genres or something. I saw somebody walk by with an Okami pillow and a Matarasu pillow. And I thought, oh my gosh, I want one of those. It's really hard to pick, you know, just just one, just one. Um, any genre. It's just, yeah. It, sorry, I couldn't give you a better answer. <laughs> oh no, 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 that's fine. It's actually kind of what I was expecting. It's it's hard. <laughs> uh, and then your question. Yeah, you just you said you platinumed a couple of games that you'd voiced in. How does it feel hearing yourself come out <laughs> of the screen? So. The first game I ever, the first game I ever did was Spike Out Battle Street on the Xbox, and that game was like arcade hard to the point where I never actually. I saw one cutscene with me in it, and then I didn't see like the other four because the game was just too hard to be frustrating. <laughs> um, but the you know, and that was just like huh, 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 uh, the combat stuff. The first time I ever was in a game where I was actually reading dialogue was just it's 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 a. It's, it's a real mind F, because this is going to be on YouTube. I already, I don't want to swear to you. But it, it's, it's really hard to get used to. And the first time I was like a playable character with, that wasn't just canon fodder type voice, and that was in Battleborn, and that was just, it's, it's really weird. Um, in Battleborn, they did this thing where it's like chaos mode, where you get, everybody could pick the same character. And so I was playing online with some friends. It was people, they were doing a LAN party or something. It's five guys. They had all been drinking, it was clear. They all picked Isaac in just different colors. And so, and we thought that was funny, so then everybody on our team also picked Isaac. And it was just me yelling <laughs> stuff in a very friendly voice. Uh, and it was just, it was like, okay, this is weird for me. I mean, it's like, this has been fun, but this is, this is a little bonkers. It's, it, 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 I'm not used to it, but the first time you hear that, it just, you know, it's, um, I have a friend who just got cast as an NPC in the thing, and I said, you know what you're gonna do? This is the same thing I did, is that you're gonna go up to the NPC, and you can press the A button over and over and over again until you cycle through everything you said, over and over, just because you're gonna be like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it makes you feel good because you're like, I did a thing and I did it well. You know, it's, it's any sort of creative endeavor. You're just always hoping that you're doing a good job, and yeah, it's you just you just don't want to disappoint people. You don't want to disappoint yourself. You don't want to disappoint the people that like trusted you to like do a good job in their game. So yeah, it's um, it, it's it's nice. So, yeah, I know. So you raised your hand before, so yeah, yes. Um. I do play Elder Scrolls games. I have, oh, well, I've got the, oh, 10 minutes. I mean, I have 10 minutes to go, or I have to leave now? I have to stop. 10 minutes uh, to 10 go. Minutes. 10 minutes to go. Okay, all right, fast. Uh, I have played the Elder Scrolls. I, have, uh, I didn't get all the way through Elder Scrolls Online because not many people I knew played it, so I ended up doing like pretty much the solo aspect of it, which I thought was pretty cool for an online game. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm really looking forward to see what they do with Starfield. I really am. To see what the Bethesda-style game in sci-fi is going to be. Uh, but a generic question, uh, uh, what race do you like to play in, uh, in uh, Elder Scrolls? This is going to sound really wishy, but I like... If <laughs> My wife stopped playing games when they turned 3D because she's like super... She's super left-brained. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, um, she's super left-brained, so it's hard for, it was hard for her to see stuff in 3D. So she doesn't really play games any, that much anymore unless it's you know, stuff on the Switch that we play together. Uh, I always try to build my wife in games where you can play your character because it's like, look, I'm that's you. You know, right now she's like the she's the current boss in the up and coming Saints in the new Saints Row. That's yeah, right. so that's fine. I couldn't get the eyebrows right though. It, she doesn't look like her because the eyebrows are just like wrong. Um, okay, so ten minutes. Yes, you. Um, well, what I was going to ask is that what was your most fondest memory of your career that you can remember right offhand? 
Oh my gosh. In MAGFest, right before the pandemic, Ellen McLean was going to be there. And I thought, oh my God, do not freak out. Voice of Gladys, don't freak out. Don't freak out when you need it. Don't freak out. And so I'm meeting everybody. They have like a, a guest meet and greet. And, um, you know, her husband was like, I'm John Pipe. Nice to meet you, John. Hello, I, I'm Ellen. I just go, I know. And, and it just came out. And it's like, I, you know, it's, and it's just, and I was like, oh my God, I told, I said, I'm so sorry. I, I told myself I wasn't going to freak out when I met you, but I'm doing it right now, and it's probably making it worse. But, and she was the nicest, sweetest person. She was amazing. And I was like, you know, uh, my, my, you know uh, my dad and my stepmom, they live in Tennessee. They saw you at the opera when you were in Nashville. And it was, it was oh God, I cannot believe I did that. <laughs> but I mean, she, was, she was wonderful. And that was like, it was really special to have somebody, you know, with that pedigree, like, say nice things about, you know, the, we did like this voice actors panel. And, like, we were, oh yeah, Wes Johnson, you know, and all the Bethesda stuff. He does this thing where we take scripts and then people say, here's what voice we want you to do it in. Or they, the audience basically picks what we're going to do, and we have to, they're, they're our directors, and she was just fun. So, yeah, that was, that was, that was a great moment. It's nice to have, like, older peers go, you know what, you're doing a good job, kid. So, <laughs> so uh, yes, yes. Okay, so the voice of Bowser's Kenny, uh, Kenny James. Kenny James, yes. Kenny James, but yes, yes. it says here in the little Mario Wiki thing that he makes little claw hands and stuff to get him into the aspect or mindset of a monster when he's voicing Bowser. What do you do to get into the, voice, uh, to the mindset of your characters? So, when I go into a booth, I keep my feet planted to the point where it's, it's really bad because my calves usually get hurt because I, I, I don't want to get off mic. So, I, I realized this, again, in Battleborn, uh, that I kind of take the stance of the character, and, but I, then I realized this, it reinforces, because for Claptrap, he, he doesn't stand. He rolls around on his wheel. He's always keeping his balance. And I realized when I'm recording Claptrap, I'm literally pivoting my hips around like I'm on a wheel. And I didn't, it's, it's, it's just something I noticed I was doing when I pulled a muscle on my back in one session. And I, it was, it kind of, when you inhabit the character, I just kind of start moving like them. But for some reason, my brain says, stay on the mic. And so I'm like swinging my hips around like I'm on, a, like I've got like a mono wheel as my feet, but because I'm still planted there, it was like, Boink! oh God, what did I just do? And it was, yeah. Uh, but um, I, I usually kind of like end up standing like them. You kind of like limber up. I mean, for, um, uh, for, for muscular, when I was dubbing muscular for My Hero Academia, uh, based on my seventh grade bully, who was a real <laughs> ass hat, um, I won't name him now because, you know, he might have turned a new leaf and, you know, like, and thought, you know what, I was terrible. I'm going to be nice to people. I don't know. I don't know him now, so. But, you know, it's like he's just, he's always lurching over and he's, he's, he's so filled with just like, just like a complete disregard for, yeah, it's, that stance will get you like that. Um, for... For Luxion in, in Dating Sim, he always sounds nice. He always sounds pleasant. You smile through the entire line. You're smiling the entire time because you can hear it the way the muscles are. It actually just works that way. It's um, even when he says terrible stuff to people. So, yeah. Uh, it, yes, one more. I, I just just scream whenever I need to shut up. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. It, um, so I had been one to dabble in voice talent, but. Um, I've got a, I kind of got this, I got very swollen adenoids, so I got this very, like, nerdy voice. I'm 27, I still sound 15. Um, do you th would you say that there's, like, a voice training or still, like, good roles that a voice like this could be used for? Uh, have you listened to any Facebook ads recently? <laughs> they, a lot of, it, see, here's the thing, maybe not for characters and stuff like that, but... Uh, a lot of commercial work now is they want people who sound like real people. You'll see it. Doesn't sound like an announcer. Five minutes. Uh, it, they want people to sound like natural. You're telling me about a thing, and there is there is a place. If as long as you have that performance, uh, as long as you have, as long as you can act. The most important thing is acting training. No matter what voice you have you will find something to do with it. Yeah. Um, the, the woman who played my daughter 
for the dad thing where they wanted to hold the rights to my voice, she, uh, she had the highest pitched voice. She sounded like a nine-year-old. That was her natural voice. And voice work was like, that was her thing. It was almost like her voice was made for that. And, it, you know, because you, you always, the reason why adults always play as children, because children, their voices mature, and a series goes on forever. I mean, if Luffy was actually a teenage kid, yeah. it'd be like 20, 37 now. Uh, they replaced Hey Arnold's voice actor twice. Um, yeah. Sora's voice actor got uh, too mature. Yeah, yeah. But, but this, this woman, her voice was just perfectly pitched to sound like a nine-year-old kid. <laughs> and it's like, you know, she probably, I bet she had people make fun of her voice when she was younger. And it's like, look, she's getting paid to use that voice now. So, ha-ha. <laughs> kid who beat me up in the seventh grade. I'm on Cartoon Network, you're not. <laughs> Dick. Sorry. I, I, yeah, I, my seventh grade year was really bad for that one guy. That's why I turned it into probably. I wanted people to be really happy when muscular got slammed into a mouth. And so that's why I made him sound like that. So. Built up anger, repressed anger from like, you know, seventh grade. Well, success is the best revenge. That, that is true. That is true. Uh, you know, but the best probably, probably is like, you know, and an Ivy League banker with you know rolling in you know multi million dollar mansion probably you know, you know but he's probably not having as much fun as I am. Yeah, he's not he's, he's not with all the wonderful nice people here, you know. <laughs> he's probably got you know stockholders going. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey. Is he talking about me? <laughs> Son, who are you listening to on YouTube? That sounds vaguely familiar. Nothing, <laughs> <laughs> Dad! Next time they see you, they're gonna, I heard about this on YouTube. Um, <laughs> and, like, and then I would go, oh, you thought that was about you? <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway. <laughs> I'm not bitter. I, you know, it's weird. It's like, I like to think of my... My favorite anime is freaking Kimono Friends. Everybody's nice there. You, be nice to people. Be kind to people. Help people. Be kind to yourself. I'm probably running out of time. But it's like, I try not to be angry. I try not to be bitter. But sometimes it's like... Uh, yeah, but you know what? I turned that... That... that that kind of like the anger that I had, you know, about that. It's, it's hard to get over stuff like that. It Even as an really adult, is. it's like turn it into something positive. Make a badass villain on a cartoon, mm -hmm. you know? It's, I just, I, I try to look positive now, you know? It's like, because there's, people are so angry now. It's like, what, what do you get out of that? You're just angry all the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. There's really no reason for it. Exactly. It's like, I mean, it's. Super sane. Yeah, it's, it's, like everybody's having a great time here, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been coming to conventions a hell of a lot longer than I've been invited to them. I love coming to cons because it's just I like talking to people about stuff. I, yeah. Anyway, I, so uh, so that's my Q and A as we're being kicked out. So um, if, so if you come by my table, I I, I love chatting about things. You know, it's I just like talking to people who are in the same stuff that I am. So. Uh, bye, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Maya.